actually the Prince of Wales was changed to the Prince of Wales in 1901 when King George, had the, well, when he was the Prince of Wales, but the sooner later became King George, he, he traveled through town. The original part, yeah, it was uh, on the, right on the train tracks and right across, he was the original train um, depot. And that's where the people would get off and then they would just go across the train tracks to the Prince of Wales. And there was a ladies and ladies escort. It was more of a, a center of town type of uh, hotel. It wasn't anything fancy. Um, at that, at that, that year, at the end of the year, uh, the Prince of Wales Hotel, which was called the Prince of Wales Hotel, only 16 rooms and it had, uh, it was in receivership. Um, and so we, my dad, my mom, and myself, and my uncle, um, a Mr. Wiebe from Germany, um, he was he was doing very well in the uh, the blou the women's blouse industry, and so he had uh, he was very wealthy, and so he would be a silent partner, and so um, we toured it at Christmas uh, the first year I was at Ryerson, and uh, we said. It would be it would be great family business to, to get into. Mom could do the books from both places. I could manage, and my dad could still stay at Lincoln upholstering and, and do that. Cause, and I that's the industry I really wanted to get into. Right, I was a year already at Ryerson, and we hired two um, gentlemen from Toronto to manage it. And so that's how that all unfolded. Um, I was I finished my school at my Ryerson that that uh, April and started working in the kitchen and in the bar and all that, learning the whole business. And they were there um, uh, setting it up and or, or managing it today. And it was Nicholas Pierce and David Barrett who went on. They only stayed there till really to Christmas. They were there for maybe 11 months. That's all they were. And... Uh, and they went on from that, from the Prince of Wales, they went on to Fenton's, open up Fenton's, and uh, a couple of other really good restaurants in Toronto. So they got us off to a really good start. But I don't know, I don't think Niagara on Lake was for them, and Niagara on Lake wasn't, they weren't for Niagara on Lake type of thing. And so, and the Shaw Festival had, uh, had just got the main stage going there in 1973, and we bought in 1975. Easter 1975, we opened up. So it was getting busier and busier. So um, we started right there with the, um, um, oh, and so they left at Christmas 1975. And uh, I had to quit school because then I had to come in and manage. I had to be the day-to-day the -day manager. After the, the 77, we added on uh, 24 rooms and a conference facilities already because we had to, um, or yeah, not seventy seven. We had to get some winter activity going, and John Drope owned the Pillar and Post at the time. So, and they were John Drope owned the Pillar and Post, and then Gary Burles and his mom owned the um, Oban Inn. So there really just was the three of us, and so we worked really well together. We had lots of conversations and that. So it was a really it was a very good working atmosphere within the town uh, in the hospitality. Um, and uh, and it worked well, and so we shared each other's knowledge and things like that. And it was a, a fun. It was busy. It was every year was busier and busier and busier. We we had uh, um, a good number of years there when we just kept building. Every two years at the Prince, we went. We started with sixteen rooms and uh, sixteen rooms, and in the there was rad, rads in the in the uh, like radiator with. Um, rope coiled up on them as the fire escape, you know. So it, it went from those 16 rooms until we completely had to, over the years, we we, well, we had it for 22 years and brought it from 16 rooms to 106 rooms. 